Before we talk about your music now, uh, let's go back a little further. Um, you grew up in a desert kind of area. Yeah, I was I was born in Los Angeles, and then um, around the age of 12 or 11, I moved to the Mojave Desert area. And what was it like growing up? Uh, it was horrible at first, to be honest. I mean, there was nothing to do. Um, it's just all desert, and I think there were, at the time when I moved there, there was only one high school, there was one supermarket, it was, there was no one there. So. so what did you do as a kid? Uh, I skateboarded a lot, and um, when I was 15, my grandfather bought me a guitar, and ever since I got the guitar, I just stayed in my room and learned to play. And why did you want a guitar? Um, I was always obsessed with music since I was a child. Um, so, yeah, I grew up watching MTV, and I don't know, I was kind of just obsessed with music in general. Um, and I wanted a guitar, I don't know, I just felt like it was, it was the right thing for me to express myself at an early age. And what was the first music you really got into? The very first music was pop music, you know, Michael Jackson, um, Prince, Madonna, things like that. And that was mainly because of the, the music that my mom had you know, in the house. But once I started discovering music on my own, it was, it was punk rock. It was metal and then punk rock. But um, what kind of music did your mom have in the house then? She just had a few cassettes. And I, I think I spoke about it before in an interview. And it, there was like four cassettes. It was um, Prince, Purple Rain, uh, The Cars. Morris Day, Mary Jane Girls, and Madonna, Like a Virgin. There was five cassettes. So that was my first exposure. And what, which of those cassettes did you like the most, or which song on it? I liked them all for different reasons, but I would say probably Purple Rain, Prince, yeah. And why? I don't know, maybe because he was, he was interesting to look at too. Because you, know? you know, back you know, when you had cassettes, you would look at pictures of Prince. And, uh, he was an interesting figure, and his music was um, poppy, and, I don't know, I really don't know. <laughs> and how did you evolve from that to punk rock, or metal and punk rock, you say? I think just, just hanging out with my friends, and at the time when I was skateboarding, all the, all the, all the skate videos included punk rock, and that was kind of my exposure to punk music. And it just felt right, you know, being a teenager, um, the teenage angst and frustration also with living in, in the desert, you know, it was very frustrating for me because I couldn't do anything. It was, it was nothing to do, so I just, I was kind of angry and it just connected. Okay. And did you write your own music in those bands or? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wrote my first song when I was 15 and I would just sit in my room and write music. And what was the first song? What, what it was, was it about? It's funny because I remember this. And norm, I don't really remember much before that of my childhood, but it was called Claustrophobic Man. And maybe I was just expressing the fact that I was in my room and there was nothing to do. Uh, yeah. Kind of a deep song for a 15-year-old. And it was a really aggressive punk rock song or something completely was, different? I remember it was kind of inspired by Bad Religion to that band as a, as a child. So it was, it was punk, but with, with melody. It wasn't hardcore, it was just... Well, uh, some people describe your music now still as um, post-punk. And do, oh, you, yeah. do you think you're still the, somewhere the little, a little bit of the same person? Or? Um, no, not really. I think, I mean, it's natural that <laughs> as we evolve as a human being, you change. Mm -hmm. So... I don't have I don't have that anger inside of me as I that I used to have. Now I just have more questions about my existence. And that's what I what I write about. So, um, um, how did you start uh, the soft moon? Then from from uh, you know like since I was 15, I was kind of I was writing different types of music. Forever, I I always I've always written music, um, but I was kind of searching for the true expression, like what I really connected to. So I was trying different genres, and, and then I quit making music for a while, about maybe three years, 
and then I, I kind of started living a normal life. You know, I had a graphic design job, and um, work was tough. It was a lot of hours, and then I needed an escape. So after work, I would go home and write because I, I just felt like I had to, and that's when the sophomore came out. And it, what was cool about that was that in the past when I wrote music, I was trying to search for something new. I wanted to create something different. But with the sophomore, it's, it's when I gave up everything and just wanted to write music just for myself as therapy. Whatever came out is what was fine, and that's what happened. And then it it just clicked. Yeah. Um, but you stopped music for a while. Yeah. Do you remember why? I don't remember why. Maybe I gave up. You gave up? Yeah, in a way. I think I gave up. I think I felt like I was getting older and it was never going to happen. Because I, because when I was a kid, I mean, I wanted, I guess I wanted to be a rock star. Now and now I don't want to be a rock star at all. But when I was a kid, I wanted to be, and that's what I was trying to achieve. And then finally, when I decided to let everything go and just write music naturally, I don't know, it just happened, I guess. It worked out. So um, you started the, the project for yourself? Yeah, just as therapy. Uh, therapy in... Uh in just, what kind of way? Just to stay sane, not to go crazy. Um, and yeah, to stay calm. And also, I mean, the sole purpose of this project is to learn about myself. Because when I write, when I write music, it, it's a reflection, it gives me answers. Because it just comes out. And what I see is, is, is knowledge, I guess. Um, um, but what happened? That you wrote the music for yourself, and then at some point you decided to release an album of it, or? Yeah, I mean, initially I wrote just a few songs, and I posted them on MySpace. <laughs> if you remember MySpace, but uh, I posted a few songs, and I was just sharing my music with some friends. And Mike Sniper of Captured Tracks wrote me a message. And at first, I actually ignored the message. It took me like, I don't know, three weeks to reply. And I finally looked into the message and I looked at the label and I go, oh, crazy, like, this is, this is something real. It's not some, some random guy that wants to put out my music. And then I started getting into his project, Blank Dogs. And I really liked it and I felt like, okay, there's a connection. So let's release something. So I chose to release the first single, which was Breathe the Fire. And I mean, it, people liked it. And when I noticed that, I, I, I realized it was this was a cool opportunity, and I'll put out an album. I'll, I'll finish writing more songs and see what happens. And one of the songs on your first album, um, when it's over, yeah. was an it was an old song, right? Yeah, I initially wrote that song in 1999. Yeah, and. It was so. It was an unfinished song, and it didn't even have lyrics. Actually, I was just kind of singing a melody over it, and basically, I rediscovered that song at one point, and said, "Like, I need to continue where you know where I left off. This is something you know. It, it just feels right." So that was the very first so sophomore song I ever written. Do you remember um, how you stumbled upon it? Yeah, I was just, I was just searching. Like every once in a while, I like, I like to look back at music I've written in the past, just to see where I am now in comparison to where I was. And I had just re remembered about those songs that I wrote. I wrote three, I think. It was three songs in that kind of same, within that same kind of sound. And I just, something hit me after work, you know, and I wanted to hear those songs again. And then, yeah, it was just random. And the other two songs? The other two songs. Um, there's actually one, one I want to rewrite. There's another one, and I've actually, I've actually thought about possibly releasing those songs you know, as a seven-inch or an EP or something. I think would be really interesting. But it's very, very amateur. It's, that's the funny part. But I mean, that's fine. You know, I'm fine with being vulnerable and letting it out. Uh, your fir your first album. Um was very personal about your childhood. Yeah. Um, what kind of things did you um, process in it? 
I just wanted to find, I wanted to, I just wanted knowledge of my childhood because I had blacked it out. I don't, I don't remember anything. I, I just remember maybe, maybe the age of 12 and on, but everything before that, I, I, I don't remember anything. And I was just writing music to, to see what came out, to see, I mean, that's another reason why the music was natural. I just wanted it to come out natural because if it's natural, it's it's gonna express who you really are, and 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 hopefully I was I was hoping to find out who I was, you know, at a younger age. But do you do you have any idea why you've blacked out that that part? Yeah, I have. I mean, it was. <laughs> I don't like to talk about it too much, but it's it was for me. It was very traumatizing. I had a very traumatizing childhood, and I think that's. That's probably why I blacked it out. Okay. Um, you say you you make music to learn from it uh, yeah. about yourself. I mean. Yeah, always. Uh, what did you learn from the, from that first record? From the first record. Yeah. Uh, what did I learn? I learned to get over all the things that I was holding in, all the things I blacked out. I learned how to be closer. <coughs> To my family and uh, to feel more confident about who I am, because I mean I suffer from insecurities and self-consciousness and anxiety. And, and, yeah, I'm learning to become a better person. Okay, and um, your new record, uh, Deeper. Um, in what kind of mindset were you when you started writing for it? I. So since I started the the soft moon, I've been I've become obsessed with learning about myself, and with deeper I wanted to go I wanted to push that even harder, and just and also too to to reveal even my more my most vulnerable sides, um, just express everything without holding back at all, without feeling like I'm going to be judged. You know, I didn't care with this with this record, with with previous records I. I considered the listener a lot more, I would say, um, and I was kind of holding on to this sound, this formula that I had created. With Deeper, I wanted to kind of just let go and even learn more about myself as much as possible. And, and also, too, I feel like as I've evolved, I've become a better songwriter, and I wanted to express that as well. I wanted to show that I could write an actual song rather than just experiment with sound and yeah. And what did you learn then from from this album? From deeper? Mm -hmm. I've learned to become like that confidence I was mentioning earlier. I I'm I'm becoming a lot more comfortable with myself. And I think that's that's what the process is for me. It's just I'm I'm so exhausted about feeling so anxious and uncomfortable with who I am. With this record I'm, I'm just I'm just getting closer to that point of of accepting who I am. And is um, is that because of music, or also that you are becoming more comfortable with yourself? I guess it's because of music. It's the only way for me to 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 reach my ultimate goal of that inner peace. So. Okay. And moods um, are important for your music. It's something that moods. Moods. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Definitely. So what kind of moods are present on, on Deeper, you think? I'm always like, to, there's always a sense of anxiety. There's that, this, a sense of claustrophobia. I think the ultimate mood that I go for is a sense of trying to break out. There's always, there's always optimism, there's always hope within all the darkness. It's always a battle. And that's usually the overall mood that I go for. It just, it's not what I go for, it's just what comes out. <laughs> and what was the first song you wrote for the album? Oh yeah, I remember. Wasting. Wasting? Yeah, Wasting. Oh, Wasting. And? I wrote that in Berlin. I actually wrote that song two years ago in Berlin. I moved there, um, I think it was in January, two years ago, and it was snowing. I was, I was there alone, I didn't really have any friends there. Super depressed, um, and I think it was my first time uh, living in Europe. 
at least trying to live in Europe. And I just felt like everything was failing. And I was making the wrong decisions. And, and I wrote that song. And then I held on to it. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't start writing the record again until like a year after. So that song had been written a long time ago. It's kind of like kind of similar to the story about when it's over. Like it's something I had written in the past, and then it takes a lot of time for me to realize that okay, I have to continue from here, and that there's something to learn from that. And the album title, I guess it's uh, maybe self-explanatory yeah. in the sense of I deeper. Think, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Um. Let's see. You said um, try to move to Europe. You've moved back now, or, or is yeah, you're trying you know, to? Yeah, it's, no, it's, <laughs> I moved back to Berlin, and now the timing seems right. I've been there for a little while now. I think I've been there s since July of last year. And yeah, it feels okay now. I think it's also because, like with Deeper, I mentioned that I had become a more of a confident person. And I'm, I'm closer to that inner peace. So now I'm not as scared, I guess. And which means that this whole concept is working for me. Okay. Thanks for your time. Cool, thanks.